Apex musicians in bars getting beer. I've got Darren. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good. Yeah, I got a beer. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Yeah. Talking about uh, heaven and hell November 7th. Oh, I, this homeless guy. I was walked by him. <laughs> now, these, these friends of mine I've known forever. Um, they decided to do this thing with wanted to recreate um, classic albums. And it's been done by another friend of mine. But uh, these guys play it well. They, they actually run it, and they, <laughs> and they, um, they participate in it. And right. they asked me to do uh, Heaven and Hell, and who the hell wouldn't want to do that? Sure. So... Uh, We've done one or two shows, maybe three, I can't remember. And we got one coming up November 7th at the Oz of Oshawa Music Hall, I believe it's called, yeah. yeah. And uh, so that's a little hometown side of the world. You're from Oshawa or born in Whitby? No, I'm not from here, but I, I moved to uh, Ajax in 69 from uh, the UK. Oh, yeah. I used to live in Brighton. and uh, But Oshawa is where all my friends and family live. All right, that's cool. And so you do this jam right here? We're right here at the corner pocket, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we started this up a few months ago. I'm really bad with time, it escapes me. But uh, we've been here a little while, and we're trying to build it, you know, try to give another venue for all the musicians. Now, this town is littered with Class A musicians, like unbelievable musicians. And we're trying to give them a bigger venue to play, you know, big loud system, bigger lights. Yeah. And uh, Joe and Christina, that are running this place, uh, which is helping them out right now. Oh, that's great. And so you also got live sex shows still going? Yeah, we play the odd show here and there, you know, in, a, in the club space. <laughs> and Busketeers. <laughs> yeah, which is an acoustic version and a lot of different songs. All right, so uh, who do you play with in some of those? Uh, any... uh, Busketeers, well, live sex show and Busketeers are pretty much the same. Same guys, it's uh, Pat Carano, my drummer, uh, Bob Fernet, and Pauly Fonseca. Um, on bass, and it's the same thing, but Busketeers was just something that smaller places could handle, because Live Sex Show is a big, loud, in-your-face rock band, and uh, we wanted to do something different, and it was, it was nice, too. It opened up a whole bunch of songs musically that we couldn't really do with a full electric guitar band. Sure. So, and the big thing, of course, is you're, you're back with Jakey Luke. Yeah. So yeah. how did that begin? I mean, I heard a great, great version of the story on Keith Shannon's show, yeah. uh, Rock Nation, which was an unbelievable show. I mean, you, you were you two, the two of you had such great chemistry. It was, it was awesome listening. I'll give you the Reader's Digest All version. Right. Yeah. Uh, I walked along McQuaid one day, and Kevin Simpson, the manager of Oshawa, said, Jakey Lee's looking for a singer. And I'm like, yeah? <laughs> because you should audition. I'm like, what's he going to want with a guy from Curtis? I live in Curtis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and he goes, well, you should send something in. And, and I, I was one of those guys that tried to get the Velvet Revolver gig, wrote a couple songs for, with Slash and, and those guys. So I sent that song in and a song I did with a, with a, a friend of mine, Maladin Alexander from uh, Vaughn Groove. I don't know if you remember that band. We wrote a song called L.A. Whore, by, and we called the band Bastard. And, uh, so they saw that, and about 12 hours later, my phone rang. Wow. That fast. Yeah. Right. So that's the nutshell. And Pretty so much. And then uh, we, did our, we did our thing, and I had my reasons, which it's nobody's business but mine. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I left, you know, and it, it was, you know, I kept my mouth shut for the longest time, but everybody's like raining on, on Jake. I'm like, Jake is so not hard to work with. He's like the coolest, sweetest guy ever. Right. But... He doesn't like how the business is run. It's an awful, mean animal. And, and I knew that, so I just didn't want to be the bringer of any bad news, so I just, I just kind of walked away. Okay. Broke my heart, but I'm a dad first, right? Yeah. You know, and if I'm gonna be away, I need to earn. And so, some time went by, and Jake and I just kept in contact, and he'd have a few drinks, and thought it'd be funny to tell me something he did on the road, and that ha <laughs> We stayed in touch with friends. Sure. Same with you know Greg. Everybody in the band. Yeah. So um, one day I just got a call and says, "Hey man, would you do some shows in the states and Japan?" I said, "Sure." No hard feelings, man. It's yeah. just business. That's cool. And uh, I went and did it. Had a great time. Right now, uh, I think right as we speak, we might be jamming in Pennsylvania. We're coming up with some new material, and then I'll go up in November, take the material, and make songs out of it. 
That's cool. And so you did part of the 2015 tour. I did. I did um, the Rainbow uh, Street Party, which was fun. I got to um, see all kinds of old friends and, and Great White and all them. They're awesome. And Oni Logan was there, which was nice to see him. Sweetest guy ever. And, uh, and then we did a San Jose, caught fire in a limousine, uh, and then we flew uh, to Japan. <laughs> so that's it, it's just like, caught fire in a limousine and went to Japan. Tell us a limo story. You can't kill me. <laughs> um, the, this, this beautiful club called uh, Rock Bar. It was an old casino in uh, San Jose. Picked us up in a 35 foot stretch armor from the airport. We traveled maybe four minutes on the highway, and then I smelled something. I'm like, pull the fuck over. And the way I said it, the, the driver freaked out and pulled over, and as we stopped, flames were shooting out of the hood. And uh, we weren't really scared at that point, because it's 35 feet <laughs> to the back, but I was in the first 10 feet. So we scurried through all through the smoke, and we got out and realized Jake's guitars and the bass, Anthony Esposito's bass was in the thing. So we reached back in and got that out, and then we watched it burn. <laughs> and it burned. It burned. Yeah, it looked, it looked like somebody made a, a black cardboard cutout of a 35-foot stretch Hummer. Seven minutes gone. Seven minutes. And then uh, how long before you got on a plane after that? It was funny, the, the day I was leaving, my gal calls me and says, uh, there's a plane on fire at, at the Vegas airport. And I look out my hotel. I couldn't see the airport, but I saw the smoke. <clears throat> and I'm like, well, at least they got that out of the way. I, I have a good chance of my plane not catching fire. But we left from San Jose. Went to Japan for about eight days. Saw a pile of friends. Had a great time. And uh, came home. So what's cool, they're playing uh, Whiskey and Go-Go or... Japan, Tokyo. Um, <laughs> it's easier to get to the whiskey. Uh, I, people ask me that, you know. I, I played Donington, eighty thousand people, and I played the whiskey. I mean, yeah, you, it's hard to put your finger on what you love about a show, but it's usually about seeing the faces. Like smaller shows, you can see the people their excitement and their the joy and, and what they're getting out of it. Bigger shows, it's sort of like, <clears throat> I'm an excellent target. Right. I don't know. I mean, I've, I've played to like 50 people and had a great time. Sure. And I've played to like many, many, many and not had the as great a time. It's hard to say, man. I think it's all how you perceive the day and how you perceive the show and how how well the band gels at that, at that time. Sure. Cool. That's cool. Um, so, uh, tell me about the thing you did with uh, Pat Kelly, or the couple of things that you know. <clears throat> Pat Kelly, he asked me to appear in the Amber Dragon uh, uh, video yeah. as an actor, as which I am star. not. <laughs> yeah, was it? Well, rock star? I don't know. I think I still got some medals to earn before I'm considered. Yeah, I think there was a sign on the door that said, yeah, for, for the credits. Is I had nothing to do with the ring. I just happened to love Pat Kelly. Pat Kelly could ask me to make him dinner, and I'd probably go, okay. Sure. I just love the guy. Um, we recently got together. Uh, a song he had ri written, uh, he wanted to re-record it. And he gave me a, a version of him playing piano, singing it. And I'm like, why do you want me to sing it? Because he sang it beautifully. He goes, well, I don't know. I just want you to do it, and we'll go. Maybe we'll change it up, rewrite it. And I added a few things. My first recording ever with a bassoon player, oh, yeah. and this guy was awesome. I swear, I'm so sad. I think his name was Jeff. I'm hoping I'm correct. <laughs> and Dale Harrison on uh, percussion. There was a guitar player that won a contest, and he won the uh, Randy Bachman guitar. I've forgotten his name. He's a sweet guy. He did some work, and I was only there on a Saturday afternoon for a few hours. We wanted to record it for a friend of ours, Mercedes, who's battling cancer. Um, she's as part of, as much a part of rock and roll as any of us in the bands. And um, I didn't know she was sick again. So anyway, we just got together and, and we did this thing and tribute to her and you know, for her to hear, you know, and to, know, to let her know how much she used us. Still sending all our love, her. So it's tough. 
And uh, so what about uh, what about favorite other people that you play with other than Jake? <clears throat> well, the harem scarum guys, um, they're my brothers as far they're as they're as related to me as my own family. I mean, uh, there's a good chance we're playing Sweden Rock Fest this year. Great. Yeah, the Scarum guys, uh, he just, Harry just texted me from the UK. He's doing a record out there. And uh, he said, you, you want to do Sweden Rock Fest in February? And I'm like, hell yeah. I said, try and get the, um, oh, what's the other one? Festival in Wales. It's in Wales um, in December, December uh, 4 to 6. Okay. But so that's probably wouldn't be good. Well, well my birthday's December fifth. Oh, I kind of okay. want to be around here, get presents. You know? So maybe not with the Aaron Scaram show, but uh, uh, Sweden. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, not definitely. He, there's, okay. It was just something he asked me if I wanted to do, and I said sure. Okay. And so you did Aaron Scaram recently too. Yeah. I. Um, what did I do with them? Oh yeah, I did Japan, and I did uh, the Phoenix. Oh, really? Did a live DVD, 20-something songs, exhausting. <laughs> so is that coming out soon? I believe so. Like, I just make music. I really have yeah. nothing to do with how it gets to you guys. All right. But, uh... <laughs> it was done. It was recorded. Yeah, yeah, it was done. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and so you play pretty much everywhere in Toronto on the GTA, I guess? Yes and no. You know, I'm getting older and not so apt to travel far, but, you know. What, what was your first gig? First, first noteworthy gig, let's see. My first show I think I ever did was Cable 10 when I was 13 or 14 with three guitar players and a 15-piece double bass mishmash drum kit and no singer and no bass player. You were a drummer? Yeah. And you didn't sing them? No, I don't even know if I knew. Really? If I could. <laughs> I don't know, it was so long ago. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's great. I mean, uh, you, you got anything else you want to share you need to tell people? Or? Corner Pocket Jam. Every Thursday night, whether I'm here or not, it's going to happen. Big room, big PA, great musicians. Good time. Cheapest drinks in town. Drinks. Come check it out. Yeah. All right, Darren James Smith, thanks for being on Musicians in Bars, getting beer, dude. Thanks, thanks very much, man. Thanks. Awesome. Great show.